in the south Melbourne how to make a video how to gut girl and fill it a knobby snapper or a knobby porgy look at that so uh, I'll go through the procedure what we do as soon as I catch the fish I brain spike the fish uh, where's my spiker it's a stainless steel spiker so you got uh, where the bones come to the out there you got you just go in behind in between those bones and you just massage the brain section which is in front of the backbone and that kills the fish instantly and you can see what happened the, the fish is nice and firm and solid and, and your, your flesh firms up so the next thing you have is a slurry box and you have this there's still some ice in there but most of it's gone to water but what you have is a, a, some water in there and a lot of crushed ice and you put the fish in the crushed ice and you try to keep the fish nice and straight because if you if you let the fish get rigor mortis when it's all curled up when you go to fill the fish and you straighten the fish up that'll tear the flesh and then your flesh will separate when you take the fillets off so the first thing I'm going to do I've got this board I found floating around out there it's a bit of marine ply I think so it's a beautiful cutting board so I'm just going to going in the vent along the back along there through those two fins right through to the head turn it over and separate the gills a bit so you can see how hard the fish is how because it's so solid and stiff and that's from the brain spiking and the slurry and and that makes the, the, the flesh perfect for sashimi if you want to have uh, eat your snapper raw it makes it really good to cut up in the thin strips and you cut around in, in there and you just pull that back collecting the guts and the gills all in one go so what you do is clean up all the inside because you might need to do that because you might want to use it to bake you, now you want to uh, get rid of all this loose skin and I'll put that in after, feed the birds now you, what you do is you cut across those, those neck things there cut that up and then cut along the backbone uh, knock off every scale all around the head there's a lot of scales around the cheeks under here all around there there's scales and then knock every one off right now knock off every scale from, the, from head to toe it's time to knock the fillets off so uh, my knife's nice and sharp I'm just going to go in between those bones there and go as close to the head as possible and uh, just carve just go as close to the bones as I can to try and eliminate waste so what you're going to do is carve around the backbone and don't spike yourself yeah, yeah. So that's the first fill it off. And you can see why they call this a knobby snapper. See that big knob on his head there. This is the Pagris aratus, which is uh, what they call the porgies over in America so I don't know whether they get the knobbies the knobs on their head the ones that they get over there Second fillet, just about off. 
Uh, now the idea now is to separate the head and the backbone. Hold it up so you can, you can see straight through that. Yeah, you can see straight through it. If you wanted to, you can, but there's not much there. So uh, you could, if you do have a mishap, you could um, get a spoon and scrape off the flesh and use it in fish cakes. Now we're good, you know, with our fillet like that, we're going to just take a, uh, a cut on a bit of an angle, sharp angle towards the back. So your fillet's not, not too thick. And uh, do another one like that. even the third one. Now there's the pin bones there. So you can try to do a third one. Now with this here now I'm going to take the fin off the wing, give that to the dolphin, to the penguins, and, uh, penguins? <laughs> no, not the penguins, what are they? Pelicans. Pelicans. <laughs> uh, now I've got the pin bones and the ribs going along there, so I'm going to do a cut on the top side of the pin bones and leave all the bones in one area. And see what's happening there. Now this is big enough for three pieces, so I'll do one cut there, uh, one, one like that, and I think that's enough for two pieces there. So another cut there. Now you've got three pieces <coughs> with the bones in, which is the best part of the fish. <coughs> and this top bit, I'm going to still going to cut that into about oh, three pieces. Again, keeping the fillet nice and nice and thin, so that it's not. Oh, it's easy to cook. Mm. So I've got some uh, sea water from out at sea. I just rinsed the pearl perch in that. So um, I've got another three litres of sea water I've got from out at sea. That's a beautiful head. So, so people say you shouldn't let marine fish come in contact with flesh, uh, fresh water. So I, it's never worried us over the years, but you just give it all a rinse with this sea water from 30 miles out to sea. I've got heaps of ice left over, so I'm just gonna bag this up and put them on the ice and then take them home when I, when I go home. This piece here, I could cut that into two more pieces. It's quite thick. So here's our finished product here. We've got our head for our Tom Yum soup. We've got our frame for fish dock. We've got all our fillets here. Uh, the best part being the wings and the part around the stomach. That's where most of your omega-3 oil is. So there's nothing wasted. The only thing we don't eat are the guts, the scales and the bones. How's that? We even eat the eyes, don't we? We fight over the eyes. Okay, sure, thanks Jeff. for watching. It. Maybe we've got a few minutes but might feed the pelicans. Pelicans? They're going to miss out this time. <laughs> Do they come from nowhere, don't they? Yeah. <laughs>